Hello, Notre Dame fans. Marcus Freeman is the 32nd head coach for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish football program. Tyler, let's get to it right away. You've been on this. Uh, I know you've been working so hard. What's just your gut reaction coming out of this news? Well, my first reaction is that didn't take very long. <laughs> and if you look at it, you know, it makes sense that it didn't take very long. You look at Jack Swarbrick's press conference from Tuesday morning and it just felt like he already knew the direction that he was going. Look, Brian Kelly's gone. At that point, he had seen him a couple hours earlier, and that's the last that he'd ever see him on Notre Dame's campus as Notre Dame's football, Notre Dame football's head coach. So at, at that point, you got to start looking at candidates. And uh, Swarbrick was asked about candidates, and it seemed like he had a really short list. And obviously, Marcus Freeman was toward the top of that list. Uh, he knows the players. He knows the coaching staff. Um, and it was telling to me when Swarbrick didn't name an interim head coach. Look, Notre Dame could possibly make the college football playoff. Sunday, they could be a top four team. You're going to need an interim head coach. Well, maybe you're not going to need an interim head coach because you have a guy on your staff that you already wanted to make head coach. Skip the interim process. So to me, it was very quick, but that it went quickly because – Jack Swarbrick knew who he wanted. It was a guy already on the staff, and that was Marcus Freeman. Mike, has uh, the the recruiting effort gone from worry to just total optimism here? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially on the defensive side of the ball where, you know, Marcus Freeman and company have done a fantastic job, um, you know, on that side of the ball. And, you know, there's certainly um, relief with the offensive recruits too. You know, like uh, we've talked about this a lot during the coaching search and that, like, Notre Dame, Brian Kelly built such a strong culture, you know, you don't need to blow it up and bring in a new culture. You can kind of keep that continuity with Marcus Freeman and the recruits feel that too. I, I mean, I don't expect decommitments really to happen. Devin Moore decommitted from Notre Dame, um, you know, but before Marcus Freeman was hired as head coach. I think Fighting Irish could flip him back. And Greg, you know, we think so highly of that yeah. young man. I mean, it's – this is a good thing, I think, for the long term of Notre Dame football, but especially in the short term with this 2022 recruiting class, even 2023 with the current Notre Dame football team. Does the committee now look a little bit more favorably uh, on Notre Dame, considering, um, you know, the committee chair basically said on Tuesday that, you know, it, it's a factor. Brian Kelly not being there. We don't know the future of the football team, but now they have that head coach in place for the future. I think it helps Notre Dame's case. Tyler, it's 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 fun to uh, look back at Jack Swarbrick's presser yesterday, and th there was there was some blowback from Notre Dame fans that thought he looked tired and unprepared. Uh, and I just never bought that Jack Swarbrick would go into any situation unprepared. Uh, what what would be your response now <laughs> to those people that had those criticisms? Well, first of all, I would ask them, who isn't tired? I know yeah. all three of us are. And the guy, you know, calling those shots and making this hire, absolutely he's tired. He probably didn't sleep a lick on Monday night when it came out that Brian Kelly was leaving. This is a guy he's worked 12 years with, and all of a sudden, just like that, he's gone. So, of course, he was tired. And, of course, he had to call the press conference, too, because, you know, it, an hour before the press conference took place, uh, LSU was tweeting out that, you know, Brian Kelly's the new guy and there's mm -hmm. pictures, there's videos, you know, Swarbrick had to show face. He had to tell Notre Dame fans in the Notre Dame community that this was going to be resolved. Notre Dame was looking for its next head coach, obviously didn't have to look very far, but uh, at the end of the day, that press conference had to be called. And there were some things in that press conference that uh, kind of told you the direction that he was going. Uh, he was looking for a good fit at Notre Dame who hasn't said that Marcus Freeman hasn't been a good fit. He loves the place. He, he's he been here for a year, but he seems like he's already a Notre Dame guy. So check off the list there. And then I think the second thing that was really telling was, you know, when Jack Swarbrick was making a coaching hire 12 years ago, he was looking for a guy that could completely overhaul a program and build it from the ground up. Mm -hmm. This program is one of the best in college football right now five best in college football right now so marcus freeman doesn't have to do much building he has to do some maintaining and then a little bit of building on top of that and you know mike can speak to the recruiting aspect of that he, he's in a place where he can take what he's given right now from brian kelly and and you know build upon it and keep contending for the college football playoff and maybe even breaking through a ceiling that brian kelly had for a few years here here's the thing tyler yeah. 
Marcus Freeman has been focused on defensive prospects. Now as the head coach, he gets to recruit both sides of the ball. Um, I mean, look, the offensive staff's done a really good job, obviously, but man, now you get Marcus Freeman involved in all those prospects, and we'll see um, the you know the assistant coaches and, and get more details about who exactly he'll have on staff, but this is going to be a staff that recruits their butts off. And Marcus, it starts at the top, right? Yeah. Marcus Freeman is a dog on the recruiting trail. That is going to trickle down. He's not going to allow his assistant coaches to slack off in recruiting, that's for sure. Please hit like on this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you visit blueandgold.com, please seek out our free email newsletter. Sign up for that. No pain, no money out of your wall. It's a great way that we keep people up to date. Mike, I want to go right back to you about Marcus Freeman as a recruiter. First, does this solidify Jalen Sneed, who I think, and I know you think, is one of those difference-making athletes that's going to bring you know Notre Dame potentially to the next level? It was pretty simple. If Marcus Freeman was staying at Notre Dame, so was Jalen Sneed. If Marcus Freeman was not going to be at Notre Dame, Jalen Sneed was not going to be at Notre Dame. And there's probably many other recruits that kind of fit that mold. At least it was going to be a lot more difficult for Notre Dame to hold on to them. So, like like I said, like I'm kind of gone back and forth on, you know, if Swarbick didn't think Freeman was the guy, like – you, you don't want to focus too much on the short term. You want to look at the long term. But, man, does it feel good for, for Notre Dame Nation that, you know, this class and everything kind of going on in the short term is just going to continue. And, and like Tyler said, um, you maintain, but you can take it to the next level with a guy like Marcus Freeman. Tyler, you, you come from Big 12 country. You're from Texas. You covered Mississippi State football. So you have a, maybe a different perspective, certainly a different perspective than people who've just been engulfed in Notre Dame football their whole lives. Um, Marcus Freeman is 35 years old. He's the youngest Notre Dame head coach since Terry Brennan back in the 1950s. In your opinion, is that a concern at all in this day and age? What, what are your thoughts? I don't know how old Lincoln Riley was when he took over for Bob Stoops, but he's not a very old guy right now. So he, yeah. he was probably, you know, uh, close to 40 years old or so. 35 is pretty young, sure. But, I mean, Sean McVay took over for the Los Angeles Rams when he was younger than that. And, and he looks uh, 12. <laughs> and, and Notre Dame is, uh, you know, as close to a pro football program as it gets in the college ranks so I don't think it's that concerning it's just kind of the day and age that we're in and I bring up Riley because look Bob Stoops was one of the best coaches at Oklahoma you know of all time won a national title there coached there for two decades everybody loved him um, I don't know if everybody loves Brian Kelly right now if you wear blue and gold but you know that narrative will probably change when, when there's hindsight to be reflected upon Brian Kelly's one of the best coaches in Notre Dame history was here for 12 years and Marcus Freeman is kind of the Lincoln Riley in this situation in that he's taking a really good situation. Um, you know, Oklahoma was a college football playoff team when uh, Lincoln Riley took over for Bob Stoops. It's kind of the same situation here with Marcus Freeman in Notre Dame. It's obviously a little concerning that Marcus Freeman has never uh, spent a, a down as a head co as a head coach in college football, mm -hmm. but you've got to start somewhere. And uh, you know, this is a great place for Marcus Freeman to start. We, we've talked about the starting point and everything that he's getting. If if he's able to retain a lot of these assistants, and that's another thing Jack Swarbrick talked a lot about yesterday, and that was pretty telling too. He just kept talking about the staff, the staff, the staff. The staff stayed out on the recruiting trail. The staff stayed in talks with Freeman and Swarbrick throughout this whole thing. If this core is kept intact, I think Marcus Freeman is starting from a really good place. You're talking about the Lincoln Riley thing. Well, for Notre Dame fans, you're probably hoping that Lincoln Riley doesn't bolt for, or excuse me, Marcus Freeman doesn't bolt for another job here soon. But wanted to mention there's just something about Freeman and Notre Dame fans. You see it in his press conferences and in his interviews. Like he just is a special individual, yep. has that it factor. So, yeah, concerning that he's never coached um, a down as a leader of a football program. But Marcus Freeman is someone that I would bet on for sure. Both of you just alluded to it. I think we're in a time period in college football with the early signing period now in mid-December where coaches are going to leave abruptly and then colleges have to name a coach very quickly. I think some of the anger at Brian Kelly and the Notre Dame fan base will go away over time when they see this sort of scenario playing out over and over again at other schools. So, But at this time, Marcus Freeman, 32nd head coach at Notre Dame, 
we get to move forward and talk about and cover how recruits like the hire and what this means for Notre Dame in 2022 and beyond. Guys, thank you for your time. Stay tuned to blueandgold.com. Again, hit like and subscribe to our YouTube plant, our channel, please. Uh, enjoy all the coverage, everyone. We'll see you.